Hong Kong's government, led by Carrie Lam, has come under some sharp criticism for siding with Beijing on the new national security law. But Carrie Lam considers this to be a criticism to be more of a perception problem than an indictment of China's authoritarian rule. Hong Kong's government is shelling out a whopping $6.2 million now to combat the negative press coverage. In charge of revamping Hong Kong's global image is a PR firm based out of London called Consulate. The government has re-entered. In fact, the government has entered into a one-year contract with the firm with the objective of rebuilding investors' confidence in Hong Kong. Carrie Lam has been searching for a PR firm to restore Hong Kong's image since the pro-democracy protests broke out last year. The government admitted that it did not handle the protests well and that this had a negative impact on Hong Kong's global image. Hong Kong received bids from seven PR firms before zeroing in on consulate. Hong Kong's Deputy Director of Communications said the campaign would help the city reconnect with the global audience. The campaign is expected to highlight Hong Kong's economic recovery process and its response to the COVID-19 pandemic. The PR firm in question, Consulum, has a history of partnerships with autocratic regimes. It has mostly worked in the Middle East and was widely criticized for working with Saudi Arabia in 2019 despite the murder of Jamal Khashoggi the previous year. Consulum was founded by two former employees at Bell Pottinger an agency infamous for working with corrupt and autocratic governments. Bell Pottinger went into administration in 2017 after its involvement in a massive scandal in South Africa. Multiple firms bidding for Hong Kong's tender had decided to pull out after the enactment of the security law, but Consulum continued to remain in the race, ultimately securing the contract to help Hong Kong boost its international image. For more of the updates on Hong Kong, we are joined by Richard Kimber. Richard, uh, thank you for joining us on this broadcast. Now, first up, uh, China has appointed Eric Chan to lead the city's National Security Committee. Um, can you give us an update on that, please? Richard, if you can hear me, uh, the Chinese government has appointed Eric Chan to lead the city's National Security Committee. Was the move expected? Yes, this is one of a series of moves that has been put into place today as Hong Kong basically gets back to business as usual after a very hectic day of protests on the national holiday yesterday. There are expectations that will be more appointments like this that have been expected and signalled ahead of time. As things start to become a little bit clearer here as to how this law will be implemented, how it will be managed and how it will actually be enforced in Hong Kong. Yesterday's protest event really is something of an aberration with regards to how the law will be rolled out in the longer term because it's unlikely there will be a lot of large scale protest events in the near future like that. As long as these um, coronavirus social gathering restrictions stay in place, there's no indication of there being any large protest event anytime soon. The protesters on the streets yesterday telling me that they expect their protest activity will um, very much now be centered on online campaigns to try and increase international attention to the continued frustration that exists here with regards to this law. And the other thing that's been flagged up today that applies to this new appointment is the concerns that still exist in Hong Kong with regards as to how these um, charges that have been made under this new law might end up actually being processed through the courts if they get that far when there are elements of Hong Kong's judicial system that don't necessarily sit comfortably with the new charges that are applied under the new law, particularly with regards to the freedom and rights that are applied to a suspect. So as the coming days and weeks unfold, particularly with these arrests, 10 of which have been specifically um, 
uh, identified by police as being applied to this new law yesterday. Ten people from the protests arrested under the new law. If these end up going through a court process in Hong Kong, that's when it will become a lot clearer to understand how this uh, law will actually be implemented in real terms. Absolutely, uh, Richard. You mentioned the first arrests that have been made by Hong Kong under this new national security law. In fact, the first two arrests that were made under this national security law were for people who were carrying pro-independence slogans. So uh, Hong Kong's administration certainly cracking down on such protesters. But Hong Kong's image has taken a battering, as has China's image, after enacting uh, this national security law, isn't it? Uh, United Kingdom has opened the door for uh, certain Hong Kongers to apply for UK citizenship. Even Australia has hinted that it will open its doors for those who wish to leave Hong Kong. Uh, Hong Kong has had to... Uh, uh, now hire a PR firm to boost its global image. That just goes to show the pressure that Carrie Lam is under to maintain Hong Kong's status as a global financial hub, isn't it? That's right. There's been a, a very large um, contract uh, appointed here. There's a, a six million US dollar one year contract to a PR firm called Consulum, um, which is now going to be taking over the, uh, the media campaign to try and boost Hong Kong's image. The main focus of that from the government's point of view is to try and improve the image of Hong Kong internationally so it can retain its international financial hub status due to concerns that because of this new law, there will be increasing reasons for big business to think about potentially moving elsewhere where they may feel more comfortable operating more freely, the likes of potentially Singapore, um, other fast-growing Asian hubs. Um, so this new uh, PR contract announced. This is actually not an easy job for any PR firm. Many big PR firms after last year's protest movement actually um, withdrew their involvement in bids for government contracts because they didn't want to be associated with something that was seen to be a very contentious PR campaign. And so the fact that this PR company has come in um, to take over is certainly a big challenge for them. And it's been met with a few raised eyebrows because the individuals who are running um, this PR company have been linked with a previous PR company that actually collapsed into administration in the UK after encountering some controversies. So there's lots of reasons um, in Hong Kong why this deal has raised a few eyebrows, not least just because of the cost, because there's criticisms um, that this is taxpayers' money being wasted on the behalf of trying to repair the Absolutely. government's reputation. Right. Um, Richard, on the streets, one final question. On the streets, on the ground in Hong Kong, there seems to be a lot of anger and opposition to China's uh, new national security law. We saw thousands of people out on the streets in defiance of this national security law and in defiance of a ban on protests that was imposed by the Hong Kong administration. Uh, you know, thousands of people were out on the streets. Meanwhile, UK and Australia have indicated that they are opening doors for Hong Kongers to apply for uh, British citizenship. Uh, is uh, Hong Kong and uh, China worried about this development? Ultimately, I don't think so. Um, certainly not China. Um, there is concern in Hong Kong that this could cause a real social divide as more people start to really question whether or not they see themselves having a long-term future here. The issue for the UK is slightly more formalised because, of course, there's some 300,000 Hong Kongers who already have British national overseas passports and 3 million people who could potentially be eligible to apply for them. And there has been a real obvious spike in applications if you ask the agencies that have to deal with these applications in people trying to get hold of these passports, even if they're not actually necessarily planning to move immediately. And the UK has upped the ante, really, by saying that it will offer a five-year potential plan for these people to move to the UK and then seek citizenship with their dependents, which obviously suddenly increases the number of people who might be seeking to move exponentially, because the offer is much better than the previous one-year potential pathway to citizenship plan. And if the dependents are involved, we're talking about whole families now potentially leaving Hong Kong to go to the UK. For Australia, slightly different. There's no such um, passport system to Australia, but Australia has said that it's now considering offering what it calls a safe haven status for Hong Kongers during this time of uncertainty because of this new law. And because of ties that already exist with other countries like Canada, for example, there's been a long history of, um, of uh, exchange of citizenship between Canada and Hong Kong, going right. way back to the handover. There's now plenty of options, frankly, for Hong Kongers who have the means to really consider going somewhere else. Richard Kimber, thank you so much for joining us and getting us all the updates uh, from Hong Kong where the uh, situation continues to remain tense as Hong Kong has made the first...